social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, uh, Twitter, all of these platforms. The question today is, should we be on them? Does it pose any benefit to being on it? Or are there more, does it cause more harm than good? So Abdul, I know actually during the early days of when I met you at med school, you hated the idea of social media. You wasn't on Instagram. Now you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok, you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook. You pretty much adopted everything but Reddit. Mm -hmm. Why? Why Why did you, let's let's start from the, the, the initial point, right? Why did you hate it at first? So believe it or not, you are right. I was anti-social media. I hated it. And I'll tell you why I hated it, right? And obviously things have changed and my mindset about social media is different. The way I saw social media, let me, before that, let me tell you about myself. So I'm, I like to be a very private person. I like to have a set number of friends, a close circle, if you like. Mm. I don't like sharing intimate details. I don't like sharing certain things mm. online or out there. You know, I was that guy, you know, during GCSE time that, you know, I'd get full marking my exams, but I wouldn't tell anyone, right? Mm. And I'd like to keep things to myself, close to my chest. And the thought of social media, I didn't have, you know, Instagram, I didn't do it up until like last year medical school, elective mm -hmm. time, right? So that's yeah. five, six years of no Instagram. <laughs> so what I didn't like about social media was the fact that I thought social media was all about self-promotion, putting yourself out there, showing off, sharing intimate aspects of your life. As an introverted individual, I didn't feel comfortable mm. and I just, for some weird reason, I just thought it was a massive distraction. No good will ever come out of it. Um, and only did we go in electives when you said to me, why don't you create an Instagram where you can share your elective photos? And at least, at least it will be a memory, a photo album of some sort and other people can see it. And I thought, hey, do you know what? Mm. At least it will give me an excuse to take photos of my electives. Cause I, even then I didn't like taking photos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard when I'm trying to produce promotional material and I got no photos of you, man. Yeah, it's like thumbnails, right? I'm very picky with the, with the image of the, this, this perception, right? Of, of myself yeah. online. But I don't know if that makes sense or if it's a very weird thing to, to hear. It does, it does. So, so social media is a window into your life. Yeah. Now imagine people peering into your window, your house window every day. So it's that idea, isn't it? It's people looking at you, people... And remember what people see People are within their rights to form a judgement exactly. I know we say don't book, don't judge a book by its cover Blah de, blah de, blah But all humans judge All humans do judge When you see someone you judge them straight away So from your images From your th from your bio From all of those things right It creates a judgement on you Right um, So I can see why not I can see absolutely why not um, So then the question is then Why did you Why did you agree to then doing it? Why did you do it? So I had Facebook from college times, mm. but I wasn't actively posting or sharing things. It was between friends and you're tagging people in each other's photos, right? Yeah, that was a yeah. thing back in then. There's, then I had Instagram to share my photos. Mm. And it was more for my own memory. Like, mm. oh, I'm going to go on Instagram. It's going to all be there. And the filters mm. and they made it look quite good, right? Let me tell you then it became addictive. So this is a different phase that entered my life, right? Mm. I remember spending hours trying to find the perfect post, the perfect filter, the right caption. <laughs> you know, like once I was out there and you know those dopamine hits or whatever, when people start mm. liking it, then I was in the middle of it on the beach posting a picture and thinking like how many people are liking it? How many people are following me? Do you see? I went into that vicious mm. mindset, man, of... Okay, now I need to get the next best picture. Okay, how do I make my bio enticing? What type of display picture do I have? How many people do I follow? And you know, back then it's like, you can't follow too many people if you don't have enough followers. All of this stuff kicked in, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is, let's think about, is a very toxic place to be. Mm. Then I started comparing my account to other people's account that had thousands of more followers, thousands mm. more posts mm. that it seems like their elective was better than our elective or they were living yeah. a better life, right? Mm. And then... I think I did that for a while, then went to Coventry for foundation training, didn't really use social media. Mm. If you go to my social media page on Instagram, it's very sparse, very, mm. there's no order, yeah? yeah? It's random crap, basically. No wonder you never made it as an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you never made it. <laughs> so I basically left as it is, kind of took a step back while working. Coventry itself was a very difficult time for me while doing foundation training one. 
And then we started the podcast. Mm. And then I saw Instagram and social media in a very different light yeah. in what I would say in a more healthier way. Healthy. And then I fell in love with it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> now you love it. Yeah. And now I love social media, right? Yeah. Within moderation. And I love it for a very different reason. And it allows me. So maybe what I'm trying to say is social media, I can now enjoy social media mm. in a way that's very natural to me mm. without having to do the things that I hate, which is oversharing, mm. intimate aspects of my personal life, always constantly vlogging and sharing stories X, Y, and Z, right? And I can mm -hmm. tell you a bit more about how I try to make social media healthy for me, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, and no, I get, I get what you, completely what you're saying. But just to go over that bit, what you're talking about when... Uh, the phase where you became addicted to it yeah. So that's that's the danger of social media, right? Exactly. So let's so, talk about some of the dangers from your experience Obviously, I'm a very skewed individual mm -hmm. You, I feel, had a very neutral, a bit more What What's I, your thoughts on it? So I use it as a showcase mm. So I always had the idea of brand development mm -hmm. Although I didn't say, I wouldn't call it I knew what brand development was I knew what I wanted to stand for mm. I knew what I wanted to show people, right? Remember, and this is very important to know Social media is w what the person chooses to show you yeah, yeah. Right? Life isn't that green for anyone, man So I see people like So like you said, you're on the beach, you're chilling out You should be taking in the experience yeah. Instead you're thinking about Did I get likes for that picture I posted? Mm. And let's be honest People are like, there's, a, there's, it's a disease right now. It's a pandemic in its own self here, yeah, where people are in restaurants. The food comes. It's going cold, and they're out here taking photos of it. Mm. Uh, taking the photos, cool, man. Take the photo, move on, enjoy that food that you're you're about to have. Um, and it goes with all the moments. You're watching a moment, say on a, you're in another country. You're you're looking at the moon or something. You could take it in. You could take in something incredible, but. You choose to pull out your phone Watch it for your phone It's saved on your phone And how many of us have ever looked back at that photo, right? Mm. So it ruins experiences for us And then the mindset Your your life becomes warped around Getting likes, the right yeah. caption and all of that It's not a healthy place to be So I'm thinking in hindsight If we didn't start the podcast mm. And use social media to grow the podcast And mm. share snippets and share inspirational mm. stuff how would I have been? But 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 look now though, you you're describing a different use for social media. You're using it, you're saying now it's a tool. Mm. It was a tool, it's a tool for you now. Mm. Before though, it, what was it? It was your I don't know, like a like a guilty pleasure or enjoyment or time pass, right? It exactly. it used me. I was the tool. <laughs> exactly. Was and tool. and that's what they want. They want to use you why your attention is valuable, advertisement, etc. etc. How many how many how many things have you bought off Instagram probably? Like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, it does trigger stuff and it does, 100% it does plant seeds. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the reason why I was anti social media. Now, like you mentioned, I'm pretty much on every platform, and then mm. I use different platforms for different things. Mm -hmm. So, Instagram is a bit more of a visual thing, mm. whereas, let's say, Twitter, I, I see Twitter as an ever never ending book. I enjoy reading, I love reading, mm -hmm. um, and Twitter is like a big book. But you know what though? The right corner of the right corner of all social media exactly. is good. The yeah. right corner. I saw a stat, apparently, I think this is just made up for the, um, the, 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 the feel of the tweet itself, but 90 plus percent apparently is garbage of Twitter in terms of thoughts and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the stuff you're referring to is all the threads you're reading, learn about learning, startups, marketing, mm -hmm. branding, putting yourself out there, healthy living, mm -hmm. uh, minimalism, productivity. There's so much that's being shared that you can learn from, right? That's what you're referring to, right? 100%. Um, so no, carry on. T t tell me a little bit about how you're using Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, if you're using still Facebook. So um, I don't really use Facebook anymore. Mm -hmm. So the two platforms I'm active on is Twitter, a lot more than Instagram. So Twitter is this never-ending book. There's loads of tweets the tweet is a it's amazing what they've done with twitter is amazing right mm -hmm. like a lot of information in such a short space of time and effort and reading right and you're learning from some of the best people in the world so much insights and it's all for free right mm -hmm. what i love about social media is the amount of information that is so freely accessible is incredible mm -hmm. there are no geographical boundaries right mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we set up here is we don't want someone to get a harvard level education 
by having to go to Harvard, right? You can learn from your peers over at Harvard on peer, right? Yeah. So access to knowledge without any boundaries is what makes social media incredible for me. Mm. I think, you know, like I'm mesmerized. I mean, all about the things I read, I hear. Mm. I know I don't share as much information as I should and mm. perhaps it's a bit selfish of me. Mm. And I think we should share the stuff we share between ourselves. And the one thing I try not to do and I'm sometimes a victim of it is this thing called mindless scrolling. Mm. All these platforms are designed to scroll forever. And mm. there's always one thing or another that will engage you, engage you, engage you, you know, long before you hold, you realize you spent hours on it. TikTok. I remember when I set up TikTok and I said, I hate this app. I don't understand it. It's not working for me. Yeah. Now I'm in the addictive phase of TikTok, but I'm addicted to the addictive phase of TikTok because I find the right corner of TikTok for me. Mm. It's a lot of like, inspirational motive tiktok found the right area for you yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> the algorithm yeah. worked you out worked me out and i was spending a lot of time on tiktok right and only because of ramadan i've kind of stopped but <laughs> this mindless growing man i don't know what other perks or benefits you see from social media what where you're most active on so i think th so this is what why let's talk about social media about what it's done for me right so it's broken down borders for me I've connected with minds and people that I would never have ever come across, right? Just think about it. Like you said, even you, we've got a geographical restriction around us, right? We live in London. And then even in London, you have to think about time, how long it takes to get from what side to what side. And then don't forget, everyone's got their own schedule, right? Within a single message, a single tweet, a single Instagram DM or a Facebook message, you can connect with someone. And that person can connect you with something else, right? Um, over opportunity, Right. Um, I think uh, Saheb, Dr. Saheb uh, said this, the founder of the, um, what's it called? The Human Behavior Club on Clubhouse. So he puts himself out there. He's the first to be on there. And it's because he's trying to increase the surface area of opportunity, yeah. of opportunity. Now, you made a whole video on this, right? How you can get a job through Twitter. Yeah. And the idea is, right, the traditional CV is I think a little bit uh, redundant. We do it for formalities, I think. I think a lot of your work you can actually just publicly display and I guarantee some recruiter somewhere will see it and they say, you know what, I want to work with this person. Mm -hmm. Also, for example, even the peer members that we want to bring onto the team, mm -hmm. right? We know about them without them speaking a word to us. Mm -hmm. We know what exactly. they're like. We know what they like and don't like. We know what they share. We know. We even know what some of their, uh, they, they've shared some of their maybe performances or mm -hmm. accomplishments or how they do certain things. We know everything without knowing it. And it goes for us as well. And it goes for everyone on social media. It's your showcase, it's your CV without it being a CV. Mm. Um, so what it's done for me is it's done that. It's opened the surface area of opportunity. People know what I'm doing. People are joining the ship. So for example, if I wasn't on social media, how would I have gotten the first trailblazers onto Peer? Mm. How would I have done that? I needed those people. Even, even before Peer, Peer's secondary or tertiary our journey, right? It came later on. The guests. How did we get the guests? How did you do we never knew, let's say, let's say a few years ago, getting guests onto a podcast like the one we're doing, right? Mm. You'd have to send an email, there's back and forth. Exactly. Now, people are putting themselves out there on social media. Yeah. And they're welcoming it. And they're welcoming it, right? I think when you're on social media, to a certain extent, it's an invitation for other people to connect with you. Exactly. Right? When you're putting it out there, we get loads of DMs, right? Mm. And it's permission for you got for other people like okay this individual's here we can engage with them and this social media their feed is like this this is their bio right i think a lot of the people with to be fair the reason why we're here is because of social media let's be honest man exactly. put in the, the the bits and bobs we do it mm -hmm. all the people reached out to you on instagram twitter linkedin mm -hmm. all came onto the podcast peer right exactly exactly so there's that element to it and then the other element we, which we can't just put away i know there's a lot of negative we'll, we'll we can talk and talk about that about how to control it but some of the one element to it is it's fun man humans love yeah. storytelling and we love listening to stories right we love sitting there learning and listening to how someone's holiday went mm -hmm. seeing how their holiday went sometimes you want to see oh they went to this particular country what was their food like you want to hear it so mm -hmm. think about it all the vlogs you watch mm -hmm. all the the YouTube videos that you watch, the Instagram pages that you follow, it's nice to see that experience. And it's also beneficial. So let's talk about it from a career perspective. Doctors sharing their sharing their day-to-day -day work, exactly. what they do. Students, they love it. Why do they love it? It's because they get insight into it, they get motivated, it helps with their study. Sometimes it's a break. So it can be a pocket of enjoyment as well. 
um, amongst the negativity, of course. Um, the other thing that it does is while sharing stories is that the the number one tool I say the number one tool for it is it's a form of education. It's a form of education. So, for example, in the startup world, listening to other founders' story, their opinion, how did they do things, right? It's so much more beneficial than I would say than doing a business degree at this stage, right? Yeah. I mean, you can stop our startup and go tomorrow and say, you know what? Before doing this business, we're going to go and do a business degree. Mm. But you know what? How much are you learning by doing and just listening and connecting to um, founders? Mm. Right? How much did we learn from the founder of Clear? Yeah. Um, I was on the meeting with her. She taught me so much. Mm. Right, it's like that. So I think you learn, you learn a lot Definitely. from founders and, and things like that. Social media, obviously, social media is what you make it to be, mm. right? And it has given so many opportunities, and it wouldn't be a discussion about social media if you don't talk about the opportunity to earn a living off social media how many people do you know that have left their day job mm -hmm. and become influencers right exactly. they're now got an audience they're leveraging they're selling products online they're getting paid to do posts on instagram mm -hmm. you know look at all of these celebrities paying hundreds of thousands of dollars right so social media is what you make it to be mm -hmm. and i agree with you the education i think i have learned a lot of information well, you know, I may read a book and, you know, it takes X amount of hours to finish the book, whatever, right? Mm. But a lot of high gem information or high information in a single tweet or a single Instagram post or like, you know, those reels and stories, man. Mm. So definitely social media is here to stay. Do you think social media is fake though now? It depends. Why are you on Twitter? So that's why I'm saying. Why, why are you on Twitter mm. and not on Facebook or as much on Instagram? And what, what, okay, so... The type of con content you're consuming is clearly entrepreneurial content, mm. life content, productivity co content, mm. um, self-development content. But is it also fake in other places? So there is this whole concept of reality and your online social media presence. Mm. Is it the truth? I do think there is an element of fakeness. Mm. Maybe people are putting making it seem their lives are better than it actually is or mm. faking happiness or faking success, mm. right? For likes, views or whatever it is, right? For me, social media, I don't think I'm as exposed to the that side of social media because I don't use Instagram that much. It's a lot of the... I use Instagram now more so to share content mm. and consume less mm. on Instagram, right? Mm. So I'm not following new accounts on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I don't... I'm not too... I don't care really too much to see what other people are up to, what they're doing, right? Unless mm. you, they're my close friends or mm. like people find inspiration and motivation, right? And I mm. see their stories, I'm like, okay, cool, they've done this, it's motivated me, right? But the general day-to-day -day people, I don't really follow those accounts or engage with them anyway. Whereas Twitter, I'm there to actively learn from people who have been there, done it, from mm. founders, from people whose niche or area of expertise is marketing or copyright mm. or entrepreneurship. I think the way Twitter does it though is that you can't be fake there. Yeah. You can't be fake on Twitter exactly. because yeah, it's you, it's, it's, and it's, it's just a thought. It's just a, a piece, uh, uh, essentially a phrase that you just put out there. Mm. It either goes into the abyss and no one knows anything about it or someone connects with that. Literally. I think so rather Instagram is more of a, it's more of a place to, but I think maybe, mm. so it's that tweet I sent you. I'd, I'd remember it's like on Instagram, poor people act rich and on Twitter, rich people act poor. Right. Mm. So, Naturally, you can visually show fakeness, mm -hmm. wealth, you know, all your accomplishments and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's easy to take a picture. Whereas on Twitter, the way you communicate, the modality of communication is words. It's articulating yourself, writing in a certain thing. And what's even more impressive is you're limited to 240 characters. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of time, effort and thought into it. But let me tell you what, why I, I, I brought up the question of fakeness Because fakeness is, di I think, directly related to the mental health um, factors The detrimental fa health, um, effect it has on mental health, mm. right? So this fakeness, as humans, we compare, right? You have to be honest with yourself You, you compare, you naturally compare Oh, I, I, I did that, I didn't get that result Oh, I did this and I never got that Or she got this, or I got that, whatever so I think there's a comparison element there and the fakeness, I think we have to understand it's, it's, it's fake or it's just the best bits of their life. Yeah. That we, we, have to, we have to understand that, right? The fakeness is, is scamming people because mm -hmm. I know people that have set up all these things 
uh, for example, like the the crypto world, especially yeah. right, they've hired the Lambos and stuff like that. They earn more money from the 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 course they're selling from than actually what they're earning from being able to do those trades. Mm. That's what fakeness does. Mm. But then the the concept of they're just the best bits of your life, and it's fine for them to showcase that. But you on the viewer end of it has to understand, yeah, that's the best bit of their lives. Mm. Um, so yeah, what do you think about that? I think people use social media for different things. People use it to scam people. I think people use it to show a certain part of their life out there. Maybe it makes them feel better. Maybe it's to, you know, show off. Or maybe it's, you know, a lot of people like to, you know, be like, at one point you doubted me. At one point you thought I would have made this, but now I'm successful. I have this car. I have this house. I have this family, X, Y, and Z, right? But... I'm not that engaged on that side of social media. I know it exists. And I think what we can say is, like you said, is understand that what people show on social media isn't reality. It's not the day to day. They only show the best bits. Who would show the crap parts of social media? Would you, you know what? You're driving a crap car. You're not going to share it. But the one day you get a brand- I never put on my car. Do you know what I mean? You're going to start sharing it, right? It's human nature. You want to share, right? It's driven by like, likes and vanity metrics. Mm-hmm. And the one thing we say is, well, I try to do myself, and it happens to me as well, right? You compare yourself to other people. Mm. You're like, oh man, you know, he's done this and he's got this nice car and he's this stage in his career or he got to do five operations. I only got to do two, two and he, you know, he's on this journal and I'm only in this journal. I think don't start comparing yourself, in it. Like mm. social media is amazing. It's an incredible thing. And I see it as a tool. Social media should be treated as a tool yeah. and you can use that tool the way, you know, you yield it for your own outcomes, right? Don't let it use you. It's easier said than done, right? Exactly. Like you said, when you say tool, it can be used for just like showcasing your stuff even. Showcasing your your holiday and using it as a, uh, as a photo album and stuff like that. Just use it as a tool rather than it using you. Um, but I do agree. Would you say on the balance of things though, it's a, it's a healthy tool? It's a tool yeah. that we should be using Definitely. in 2022? I agree. I think if I could go back in time, mm. I would have started social media earlier. Mm. I would have made a like a YouTube channel earlier, right? Mm. And it's like, you know, one of our podcasts said, when a new social media or a new platform comes out, you should jump on it straight away. Because mm. it's the people that jump on it first are the ones that have the most exposure, the most reach, the most opportunities, right? Mm. There aren't, if a new platform comes up tomorrow and there's only 10 people, you can only follow those 10 people. Yeah, yeah. Create an Instagram now and trying to get the best stuff or get as many followers or whatever you want to do is very, very more difficult, right? You're yeah, competing, no. it's oversaturated, right? Yeah. So... I think I should have started it earlier and it's like all that knowledge I missed out on and there's a lot of people which I've noticed is if I followed them a year ago they would have been even more accessible to me but since they have so many more new followers now Mm. reaching out to them is very difficult and it's not they don't want to connect with me they get hundreds of DMs Mm. right I'm not on their radar in it so I think I should have started social media earlier but I think my personality was a barrier to what social media is. And I'm glad I got to do certain things in life that opened up social media and allowed me to see it as a tool to do what I want to do and get enjoyment from it. Absolutely. Quick shout out for Peer here since it fits so nicely. Peer's just launched your place to build an audience. So you have to jump on there, uh, making education social. Um, but yeah, so saying, talking about Peer actually, I guess that's one of the main reasons we started it. So if social media is so beneficial as an educational tool, right? Mm. It's people sharing knowledge. I guess that's how peer relates to it. Mm. Um, But yeah, so I think social media is an incredible place um, for the transfer of knowledge. Um, Any other lasting remarks? Uh, I think if you're not on social media, I think it's worth going on to social media. You don't need to become an influencer. Being a user or using social media doesn't mean you need to become an influencer. I think there's a lot of gems and benefits there. But one thing I would say is be very particular and conscious of the accounts you follow. Mm -hmm. Because that is what dictates your feed. That's what dictates the algorithm. And it dictates what information is given back to you. Exactly. You should, you should, it's what you're feeding your brain with, right. your soul, your brain, what you're taking in. You might think it's not affecting you at a subconscious level, it's affecting 100%. you. Definitely. Yeah. It's affecting you. Definitely. So, um, yeah, just like w- w- when, you, when you consume food, when you're going to the gym, etc., what you consume through social media 
is so important. You better be healthy. If not, you're in for a you're in for a hell of a ride. But I do agree. It is something that should be explored. You should be open to the idea of social media. If you're against social media and you're a very private and intimate person, you don't like sharing things, then fair enough. That's don't do it. Yeah, you That's don't need to be on social media. I know lots of successful people, you know, multimillionaires even, that do not have any sort of online presence at all. They don't like social media. And that's absolutely fine as well. Do what's right for you. That's exactly. it. Do, Do what's right for you. That's it, man. Um, so I think that's it. Anything else to say? Or? Uh, I think that's it. So that's the end of the debate on social media, on the good, the bad, the ugly, and how you can actually use it. Um, check out Scrubbed In. We're on Instagram and Twitter. We host a podcast where we bring on incredible people and get their journeys on. Um, otherwise check out peer it's our platform where we're basically socializing education so people can learn from each other so now you can go to harvard without actually paying the tuition fees for harvard um, and that's it and we'll see you in the next episode